demonstration on protein synthesis and the main objective here is for you to understand the stages, the important stages in protein synthesis which is transcription and translation. So as you can see here, this is a simulation of your uh, DNA double helix. Alright, so DNA strand is a double helix, it's two strand that runs anti-parallel. So from this, you should be able, with this two here, you should be able to uh, indicate which are the ends of the two strands. Okay, so in this case, if since this is a 5 prime end, then this side should be a 3 prime end. Okay, so here is the 3 prime end. And over the other side, since this is anti-parallel, so this should be a 5 prime end. And it runs this way to the 3 prime end. Okay, so in protein synthesis, the important enzyme that starts the whole process is your RNA polymerase. And what RNA polymerase does is it helps to separate the two strands, yeah, unwind the two strands and separate them. Separate means that it actually breaks the hydrogen bonds that are extending between the complementary bases of the nucleotides. So let's pretend that this polymerase here has pried open the two strands. All right. The other function of your RNA polymerase is to add free RNA nucleotides onto the template strand. Now, is if you can see, you will be able to know which is the template strand because the new mRNA strand will need to elongate in the five prime to three prime direction. So this has to be the template strand. Alright, so here nucleotides are added. So that if you look at this first nucleotide, this first nucleotide is thymine. So thymine should pair with adenine. Alright, so let's get a free nucleotide which should be somewhere in here. This is actually transcription is actually happening within the nucleus. Alright, so this is your adenine. Let's just put the RNA polymerase somewhere in between. Oops. So this strand, the non-template strand, it will just sit around and wait until this process here finishes. Okay, so adenine pairs with uracil. And then you will have cytosine here. So cytosine pairs with guanine. And another thymine here, so thymine pairs with another adenine. There's adenine, so adenine should pair with uracil. And cytoguanine here pairs with cytosine. And you have another guanine, so that means that's another cytosine. Alright. And by now, your RNA polymerase is here. So these DNA nucleotides should actually rewound. Once RNA polymerase has passed, this, the original strand should rewind. And uh, thymine pairs with adenine. There's cytosine. Cytosine pairs with guanine. And then there's another cytosine pair, which means that it pairs with another guanine, adenine, and uracil, thymine, and adenine. The last three here is adenine pairing with uracil, thymine pairing with adenine, and cytosine pairing with guanine. Alright, so RNA polymerase is here. So if you still remember, one of the other functions of RNA polymerase is to join the RNA uh, nucleotides together and form strong covalent bond. Your phosphodiester bond is actually a strong covalent So you have already mRNA, this is the complementary strand, complementary strand should come back together and this is your uh, primary transcript. If you still remember, in the case of primary transcripts of eukaryotes, they would actually have to undergo modification and modification of the uh, mRNA requires modification of both ends which is adding up a three, a five prime cap and also a poly-8 tail at the three prime end. Alright, so 
now uh, that is your modification to the ends and then another thing needs to happen which is uh, removal of all the introns the non-coding sequence and putting together or joining together all the exons which are the coding sequence so now the resulting is a shorter mRNA strand which is ready to leave the nucleus to the nuclear pore alright so this is your uh, mRNA that is now ready so pretending that this is your nucleus nuclear envelope Okay, so mRNA leaves through the nucleus and will go into the cytoplasm and this mRNA strand now okay this mRNA strand is exactly what you have here all right but it's written in triplet bases so that you can see them as codons codons are triplet bases and mRNA they actually bind onto the small ribosomal subunit yeah? uh, and if you still remember, there's supposed to be an initiated tRNA that comes into uh, the P site. So let's just revise the sites on the ribosomes. It's an imaginary site. So this should be your A site or amino acid tRNA site. This is your peptidyl tRNA site. And the other side is the exit site. Okay, so with the first code done here, this is where the initiated tRNA comes in. All tRNAs must come into the A site. But the first tRNA or the initiated tRNA, they come into the P site. So in this case here, you have to read these codons. And remember that on tRNA, there is the tRNA binding site or the tRNA anticodon site. Okay, let's visit your tRNA which is somewhere in the cytoplasm here. So this codon here which is AUG should pair with an anticodon on tRNA which should be UAC. Alright, so the anticodon is UAC but you will have to read, remember that tRNAs will have to be bound to their amino acid and this requires another process okay so looking at this codons a u g you're supposed to be able to get the amino acid so this is your genetic code so a u g here all right first letter is a that means you will read it here and then there's the second letter which is U so it's here so A and U is here and the last nucleotide or the last base is G so G is here so this gives you methionine okay the first tRNA or the initial tRNA always a start codon so it carries amino acid methionine now the process of adding methionine onto the tRNA involves an enzyme known as amino acid tRNA synthetase. So it will require the tRNA and the amino acid to go into that enzyme and then ATP is used up and the, T, the tRNA and the amino acid is joined together. So now you have met tRNA, methyl tRNA, okay, methionyl tRNA. Okay. So this tRNA, the initiated tRNA, as it comes into the P site, there is complementary base pair. It means that hydrogen bonds will form. Okay. Now the second codon, which is AUC, should correspond with anticodon UAG. Okay. So let's find UAG, and you're supposed to read. A, U, C for the amino acid. You always read the codons for amino acid. So A is here and then there is U and there is C. So isoleucine. So the second amino acid is isoleucine. It binds to the tRNA for that particular uh, mRNA. Alright, so this is the second tRNA 
carrying the second amino acid and it goes into the A site. Subsequently, you will have the breaking of the bond between tRNA and the first poly, the first amino acid. Okay? And there is another enzyme known as peptidyl transferase that is going to cater the formation of a peptide bond between the first amino acid and the next. Alright? Then you will now have the next process which is translocation. When translocation occurs, you actually get the movement along the ribosome, the mRNA moves along the ribosome. So basically, the tRNA that was in the P site translocated to the E site and the one that was in the A site translocated into the P site. So this tRNA will leave the exit site and go into the cytoplasm. So the A site is always vacant and this site is always vacant for the next amino acid to come in. So the next amino acid depends on this codon, right? C, A, G, which correspond to anticodon G, uh, U and C. So Try and find where's your G, U, and C. So G, U, G, C, A, G. We C, A, G here. C, A, and G. So this should be glutamine. Alright. So you've got amino acid glutamine, and there is your third tRNA. Third tRNA comes into the A site. The breaking of bond between the second tRNA and the second amino acid and the formation of a bond, a peptide bond between the third amino acid and the polypeptide chain. Alright, so now there are three amino acids on this polypeptide chain because it corresponds to the number of tRNA. This is the third tRNA that we have in the in the sequence. Alright, so translocation. Translocation means your previous tRNA that was broken from the amino acid will leave through the exit site. And now you have another codon to read which is GUA. So GUA here corresponds with anticodon C A and C A and U. So let's find that. C A and U. C A and U. Let's find the amino acid that corresponds with this codon, G U A. So looking at this, G is here, U is here. And A is here. So this amino acid is valin. So valin for GUA. So the next tRNA is going to be carrying amino acid valin. So valin comes into the A site. Okay. And then there is a breaking of bond between the third amino acid the tRNA and formation of a peptide bond between the third and fourth amino acid to form a polypeptide. So the breaking of bond between the third amino acid and the tRNA, third tRNA, now translocation will happen. And you have the third amino acid attached to the uh, fourth amino acid means the whole polypeptide chain has four amino acids. So now this tRNA leaves and the one, the fourth, carrying valine is in the P site. Okay, so this next codon here is UAG. 
So let's look for UAG and to find out if there is a, supposed to be a TRNA there. So UAG, U, second letter is A, and then G. So this is actually reading for a stop codon. So when it is a stop codon, means that there is no uh, amino acid to an RNA, but instead what you have is a release factor that will come into the A site. With the release factor entering the A site, the whole thing will dissociate. The polypeptide chain is released and the whole assembly of ribosome and tRNA will dissociate. So ribosomes is free to bind to other mRNA and you, the result here is your polypeptide chain. So here what you have is the polypeptide chain. So this is the final product of protein synthesis. The first part is transcription. It occurs in the nucleus followed by translation which is in the cytoplasm. Product is your polypeptide chain or your uh, protein, soon to be protein. Alright students, now that you have seen the demonstration on protein synthesis, next what you have to do is do your own work on this. So there are several protein sequences from you for you to choose from you need to pick three so for every one sequence that you pick write down the dna in the form of template all right write down your mrna make sure you do the correct complementary base pairing and then you show the dna coding strand so this part is your transcription after that using a uh, transfer this mRNA strand onto base triplets so that they appear as codons like this you can even label this as codons using the genetic code you're supposed to figure out the polypeptide you also have to put in all the bases for your trna remember on the trna you have your anti codon so all this must be displayed on one page for every sequence that you're going to do. So you're supposed to pick three sequences, so there should be three pages containing all of this. Alright, thank you. Let's get out of here.